In this video I want to show you how to create search bar inside React with synchronous and asynchronous data. And actually it is much more difficult task that you might think. So here I have an empty React application, here is my app component, and the only thing that I created here on the top is initial articles. As you can see here, this is just an array of objects with ID, slug and title. And these are articles that we will render. And first of all here I want to create two new components. First of all an article table, this is a component where inside we will render our articles. And secondly our search bar. Why do we want to split it like that? Because in the normal application you won't pack everything in a single component. It doesn't make any sense. And with such splitting you will see the difficulties between passing data and updating it. This is why here first of all I want to create a new component, article table.js, and this is a component to render a list of our articles. So here we can create our article table component, and here as a props we are getting a list of articles. Which actually means this component doesn't know anything regarding our articles or how we are getting them, it is just a dump component to render a list of articles. This is why here we can return a markup for our article table. First of all here will be div class name and here articles table. And as you can see here I use classes to have a nice CSS. And actually if you want to code alone you can take this index CSS that I have inside the project in the description box below. So here first of all we have our div with article table and inside we want to render our list of articles. This is why we are mapping through our articles and we are getting access to every single article. And now inside we can render just a div with class name, article, and inside we want to render every single article dot title. And we should not also forget to add here a key, because in other case React will throw us an error. And inside key we must provide something unique, and in our case it is article.id. And actually with that our article table is completely ready. Let's export it now and use it inside a component. So here is export default article table. Now we can jump inside our app.js and here on the top we can import our article table that we just created from article table. And now here on the bottom inside my div class name container we can render this component. So here I simply write article table and I'm providing inside our array of articles which in our case is initial articles. For now we don't filter them, we simply throw them inside and render. Let's reload the page, as you can see our articles are rendered and our component is ready. Now let's create our second component and it will be our search bar JS, which will contain a form to submit our search and then filter our articles. This is why here export default and we are creating here our search bar and we want to create this component on the top. And for now we won't write anything inside, we want simply to return a form which will be our markup. So for our form we can write here a class name which will be a search bar and inside this form we want to create an input type text which will be a search box for our application. And here we must also add a class name search bar input. Let's save this and use this component inside app.js. So first of all on the top we must add here our search bar from search bar and now here on the bottom before our article table we can write search bar component. Let's save this and reload the page. As you can see our form is already rendered and we can start writing the code. And first of all we must plan what we will implement. So we need to think about our architecture. So what do we want to implement at all? First of all we have here a search box and normally you will type something here and hit enter and at this moment this form will be submitted, we will give this event to our parent app component and then our app component somehow must update this list of articles to filter them. Which actually means we want to filter our articles and we don't want always to pass inside our initial articles. This is why here we can use useState hook to save our articles which are filtered inside some property. So let's name this property articles and here we have our set article setter. And here we are using useState hook from React and inside the initial value will be our initial articles. 
Why is that? Because actually by default we are rendering all our articles. Now here on the top we must import use state hook from React. So what we can change now, instead of initial articles, we are passing inside our articles from the state. Let's reload the page, as you can see it is working exactly the same, but now we are using our state. Now we need to improve our search bar. And actually what we need to do, we need to create a state inside search bar. Why is that? Because actually at the moment when we are typing something, we want to save this inside a state. But only when we submit a form, we want to propagate this value to the outside. Which actually means here inside, we want to create a value. And actually this value I want to name inner value. Why it is in a value? Because it is available only inside our search bar. We will also pass a value for our search from the outside. This is why I want to have different naming. So here we have our inner value and also a setter, set inner value. And here we can also use useState hook from React. And here as a default value we can provide an empty string. Now here inside our input we can set a value. And inside this value we want to set our inner value from the state. Which actually means this input is always in sync with our use state. But also to change a state we must write here on change function. And actually here we are getting an event and we can just call here set inner value and provide inside event.target.value which will be exactly the string that we typed inside this input. Let's check this out. Here I will just console log our inner value so we will see if it is updated. Let's reload the page. We don't have any errors. Now I am typing something here. And as you can see in console, our inner value is successfully updated, which actually means our state is in sync with our input. But now at some moment we want to submit this form. This is why here we must create our new event, which is on submit. And here I want just to create a new function handle submit. Because first of all we want to write the event prevent default to avoid default behavior of the form. So here now let's create a handle submit method and we are getting here an event. This is why inside we can use event.preventDefault and after this we want to notify outside component, our parent, about our value inside the state, so our inner value. For this here I want to call callback and just provide inside inner value. And as you can see we didn't define callback here because we will get it from the props just like a function. So actually how it is working? We have an input and we are changing this state every single time when we are typing something. But we also have a form and when we are submitting a form, this handle submit will be called and here we will call a callback from the outside. Which actually means now here inside our app.js we must provide inside search bar a callback. And actually what we want to change with this callback is the state of search value. Which actually means we won't just have an inner value inside our search bar, we also want to store it inside state in our parent. This is why here I want to create search value and also a setter, set search value. And here we are using our use state hook and inside we are providing empty string as a default value. And now inside our callback we are getting a function with our search value that we provided from our search bar. And what we can do now, we can call set search value to update a state and throw inside our search value. Which actually means every single time when we are submitting a form inside our search bar, we are calling this callback. And this callback will update a state here inside parent. Which actually means here I can just write console.log search value and we can check if it is working correctly. I am reloading now the page and we are getting search value empty string because this is the default value. Now I am typing something here and nothing is changing. We don't see the update of this search value because we simply changed our inner value here inside search bar, which is completely fine. But now here I am hitting enter and I am submitting the form. And at this specific moment we updated a state in our parent. This is why I said that it is a little bit tricky, because we have two different states for our search inside search bar and outside search bar. But this architecture allows us to do different things. For example, here now we updated a state. And actually we want to do something when we updated this search value. And exactly we want to filter an array of articles. This is why here we want to react on the change of our search value. And we can use use effect hook for this from React. So essentially here we have a function and an array of our dependencies. 
and inside this array we are providing our search value, which actually means this use effect will be called every single time when our search value inside state this value will be changed. And actually here now we can just write console log search value was changed. And you can see that it is working exactly as expected. I'm reloading the page and here we have search value was changed because here we are getting a default value. After this we are typing something and we are hitting enter and we are getting inside use effect search value was changed. And this is exactly a nice place where we can filter our articles. So what I want to do now, I want to create an additional filter function before app, because this function actually can be synchronous or asynchronous, this is why I want to pack it outside. So here let's create a filter articles function, and here we are getting our search value by which we want to filter our articles. And first of all we want to check if this search value is empty, because if it is empty then we don't need to filter anything, and we can simply return here our initial articles. If it is not empty then we want to filter our initial articles with usage of filter method and we are getting access to every single article, and here we want to check if our article.title, and we want to convert it to lower case, includes our string that we are searching. And actually it is our search value dot also to lowercase. In this case here we are converting both strings to the lowercase and we will do the correct filtering. So our filter articles function is ready and now inside our use effect we can filter our articles. Let's name them filtered articles because these are articles that will be filtered and here we are calling filter articles function and we are providing inside our search value. And this is just a state that we have here. Now the only thing that we must do is update our state, this is why here we can call set articles and we are throwing inside filtered articles. Let's check if it's working, we are reloading the page here and we see all our articles, I am typing here for example 5 and I am hitting enter, and as you can see our articles are directly filtered. Once again how it is working at all? We have here our search bar, and here we have our callback, which is changing our search value here inside this specific component. And it is extremely important because this use effect will be called after changing of our search value. And here we want to filter our articles by our new search value, and we are updating our article state. This is exactly an example of good React architecture. So our application is fully working, but here we just worked with synchronous data. Inside real application typically you will have an API and the synchronous data, but with our awesome architecture we can easily adjust our code to work with API. And to simulate an API call we simply need to create a function which will be asynchronous. This is why here on the top I want to create fetch articles function. And here we also get a search value, just like inside our filter articles. But now here I want to return new promise, and this promise is exactly our asynchronous code. Here we have our resolve, and now inside I want to write set timeout to call our code just after 2 seconds. This is something similar to our API call, because it takes time. And here we can write exactly the same code, I will just copy paste this if search value and initial articles filter, and just paste it here inside set timeout. Because first of all we are checking ok, search value is empty, if yes then we are returning our initial articles, and in other case we are filtering it. But return here is wrong, we actually want to call our resolve and resolve with this array. Exactly the same we must do here, we can create here filtered articles, and here we want to resolve our filtered articles. And also we should not forget to call after resolve return, in this case we won't go here. So this function is working exactly like a real API, if here we provided an empty search value, then our API will deliver for us all our articles, in other case it will filter on the backend our articles and just give back a smaller array of articles. Now we need to change our app component a little bit. First of all here we want by default to set an array of articles to empty array, 
because by default we didn't fetch any articles and we don't have any data. This is completely normal. But now what we want to do here, we want inside our use effect to call our fetch articles. This is why here I will comment this filtered articles code and I want to write here fetch articles and provide inside our search value. And actually it is a promise, this is why here I will use then and I will get here an array of our articles. And now here we can use set articles just like we did previously. Which actually means this code will be executed only after 2 seconds because our request is 2 seconds long. And this is actually the only change that we did. And as you can see our code will work out of the box. So here by default we didn't see anything, our array is empty, but then after 2 seconds we see this list of our fetched articles. Now here let's say that we are doing new fetch, we are filtering something and we are hitting enter. And actually after 2 seconds we will filter our data. But it can be even better, here we can set articles to empty array just to make it clear that we are doing some loading. So here I am reloading the page, we make an initial fetch, now here I am filtering something and directly after hitting enter we don't see any articles before the fetch. Which actually means by building a good architecture you can easily work with synchronous or asynchronous data. And actually if you are interested to learn how to build an image slider inside React without any additional libraries, make sure to check this video also.